QuickBooks Online 2023 Accounts Payable Graphs. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in our online search engine for QuickBooks Online test support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Drive selecting the option that has Intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. We're going to be picking the United States version of the software and then verify that we're not a robot. I'm a robot too! Zooming in a bit by holding down control up on the scroll wheel currently at the 125% zoom in. Noting that in the cog drop down we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. We'll try to toggle back and forth between the two views so you can see where stuff is in both of them. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it as we do every time. Right click in the tab up top again to duplicate it again. Tab to the middle. Reports on the left. Open up the major balance sheet report. And then as that's thinking, tab to the right. Reports on the left. Opening up the P to the L, profit to the loss, the income to the statement. Closing the hamburger, otherwise known as the ham boogie. 101022 tab 123122 on the range to the change run it to refresh it tab it to the middle S closing the boogie scrolling up changing the dates from 010122 tab 123122 tab run it to refresh it that's the setup process that we do every time we've been looking at reports noting that most of the reports give more information on one or multiple line items of an amount on the balance sheet and or income statement. And now we're exporting reports to Excel to try to make pie charts and graphs from them, which can give you some more tools that you can use, useful tools, not just when using QuickBooks, but any kind of database program, because oftentimes it can be useful to export things to Excel and then uh, go from there creating charts or whatever you want to do at that time. So we could make pie charts from our assets, for example, breaking out our assets by categories compared to the total, making a pie chart for our liabilities and equity compared to the total. We could do a similar type of process. On the income statement side of things, we could make a pie chart of our income broken out by customer if we have the proper subledger, we might do that in the future. We can also break out income by category, what it is we sell, goods, services. We can break out our expenses by account if we want to make a pie chart for by account. We can break out expenses by vendors and make a pie chart based on that. This time, we're going to go back to the left and take a look at the accounts payable, breaking out the accounts payable by a vendor and make a quick chart based on that which should be fairly easy to do so let's go to the tab to the right right click on it duplicate it and then go and make another report down below that will be the accounts payable by vendor type of report closing the boogie holding control scrolling down a bit to one two five percent i'm looking for who owes who you owe who you owe what you owe what you owe so we want in the what you owe area to look at the vendor balance summary, vendor balance summary. And there we've got a nice, just small list, perfect for making a pie chart out of. Quite easily done. We could just export to this to Excel, make a pie chart from it. So let's do that. That'll be great. We're going to hit the button up top, just export to Excel. You do need Excel to open it in Excel. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to copy this report and put it in our other data report that has all of our, our reports thus far in it, which is that one, uh, just so we can see how we can put the pie chart in, in, that, in that same grouping and put them all on one PDF file. 
but you don't need to do that. You could just work in this Excel worksheet as well. I'm gonna select the whole thing by just taking the triangle, right click and copy that data, all the data, bringing it on over to the sheet I wanna put it on. I'm gonna be at the tab to the right to hit the plus button, paste it in A1 or select the entire sheet with the triangle or control A and paste it as normal. Renaming the sheet, double clicking on it to do so. I'm just gonna call this the AP Data tab. We're gonna make another tab which will have the actual graph on it and then we'll hide the data tab when we want to actually uh, print the reports to a PDF, getting a PDF with the reports and the nice graphs implemented within them. Holding down control, scrolling up. So there we have it. I'm gonna go to the, to the view to the right and then back to the left so we can see where the page breaks are. I note that within these areas, the formatting's a little bit different, Arial 8 versus Calibri 11. I wanna make it all Calibri 11 because that's what I'm used to. So I'm gonna put my cursor over here. I'm gonna select the paintbrush in the home tab and then just paintbrush the entire triangle worksheet. And then I'm gonna format it the way we wanna format it or I wanna format it. So if you're following along, then this is the way we're gonna do it. We're gonna format the cells, currency, bracketed numbers for negatives, no dollar sign. And I don't think I need the decimals either. Those aren't necessary, get, get out of here. And then we'll say, okay. And then make a bolden. I like to embolden the whole thing, home tab, embolden, hopefully easier to see for everyone. I'll scroll in a bit more and then I'm just gonna delete everything I don't need. I just want the raw data, give it some raw data. I don't need this, so I'm gonna put my cursor on the number one, select down to five, one to five, right click, delete. And then I'm gonna go from 10, I don't need that, and scroll up to six, don't need the total either. I'm just gonna delete that. Now notice sometimes there's formulas in here, but because these are all numbers, there's a pretty much hard coded numbers. It still has an equal sign. Just to get rid of that equal sign, I could select all the data, copy it, and then put my cursor back on the column and paste it one, two, three. So we have hard coded numbers. In other words, numbers without any formulas in them, just the number. And then I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. And then I need to filter it from top to bottom, highest to lowest. I could select this and go to the data to enter the filters and then filter Z to A, but I usually create a table from it. So I'm gonna unfilter that way and then go to the insert and go to a table, insert a table. And then I'll add the total column. I'm in the table design, adding the total column. So there's the total. I can double check that the total still totals up to what's on uh, QuickBooks. I'm gonna get rid of this tab. I don't need that and 1602 so does that tell yeah because it's rounded to 03 because i took the pennies off looks good Mui b to the n so then if i make a pie chart based on this uh, i still might have uh right now i don't have too many too many rows so it should be good but if i had a lot of rows i might need to delete some of the rows and then put some of the data into others so for example the next step would be drop down, sort it from Z to A, highest to lowest. And then if I wanted to combine some of these together in the bottom, because I had a lot of categories, which I don't, so it's not a problem. I can then say that adds up to the 291. And then for example, I could change this to, to 291, call this other for these last two, other, other, and then delete this last bit just going to delete that right click and delete boom okay so what's the pie chart actually do i'm going to make a skinny c column skinny c you see i made a skinny c and then i'm going to say this equals this number 755 divided by the total that's all the pie chart is doing it's breaking out the percentage compared to the total i'm just going to copy that down sum it up and that'll be the hundred percentages hundred percent so all we have to do to make the pie chart then is just select our data. I don't need the headers. I don't need the total. I just want the raw stuff in the middle. Give me the stuff in the middle, just like I eat my hamburger right out of the bun. And then you throw the bun away. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna say, let's go to insert 
and then we, we could go to the recommended charts and, the, and the, there's a pie chart they have in there for the recommended or they have some nice graphs or we can just enter the pie chart thusly with the pie chart and pick a pie chart pick a pie chart and there it is so now we can we can have a lot of flexibility for the colors of it you can pick different pie charts and whatnot that's the one we did last time and you can you can change your your template so i won't get into all the details for it but you've got options options are there for you from this point so then i'm going to do the same thing and insert a bar chart just for the heck of it for the heck in the high water let's see what it recommends insert recommended charts so we we did this one last time this one's pretty standard let's do this one let's do that one so there we have a little bit different bar chart it's not too fancy but you know it's not the vertical bar chart so it's totally unique and then of course we can change the colors and whatnot if we wanted to do whatever you want do whatever you want to do from there so you can change the colors and everything anyways so then i'm going to just take these items i'm going to i'm going to copy them into a new tab which will be my actual graph tab and then i'll hide the data tab and we'll show how to print it out so i'm going to i'm going to call this tab double click on it i'm going to call this ar graph boom uh hold on this is ap graph ap graph and then back to the tab to the left i'm just going to copy these two i'm holding down control control c copy or right click and copy and then bring that over to the ap i'm just going to put that in a1 boom and then check out where the end of my page is so i can make it go out to there at least but sometimes i might want to make this landscape because when people open it up in a pdf it still orientates vert up you know orientated so you can read it so so maybe it i could just go let's make it landscape in the page layout landscape it wait you have to be off the thing in order to do it and then then you got a landscape then you can landscape okay so there it is so then i can make this larger like so and then i can bring this down and make it bigger too boom and so now you've got your graph so just to give an idea of that then if i wanted to print this out i don't want my data tabs to show up data data that's not how you spell it. whatever what were you thinking i'm going to right click and just hide the data tabs just hide them don't delete them hide them right click and hide hide the data and then i'm going to go to something other than one of the graph tabs over here and then i go to the, my my file and i can print all of this stuff on one p to the d to the f by going to i want to print the entire workbook instead of one page i'm going to use a pdf printer this is the cute pdf printer it's for free so you can check it out i'm not advertising for them that's just the one i use as you can see and then if i scroll down then i can print all this stuff on one pdf it's a little mess of a, a formatting because we've been playing with it but you can see that the graphs then will show up without the data and you can add graphs which could give you a little bit more oomph into your reporting and impress people so that they want to give you money so i'm going to then unhide stuff by putting my cursor on this one and then holding down shift to this one and then right click and unhide now and then i'll unhide that one and then i'll do it again shift and i'll unhide that one and so that's the process for that one uh as well so if i go back to my to to quickbooks i don't think we did we didn't do anything special in far as location so if i go to the cog drop down switch to the business view then we've just been checking out the graphs and everybody knows where the graphs are at at this point they're under the business overview under the business view and then in the reports in the reports section that's the only place we've been when working at